What's going on everyone? My name's Obi and welcome back to Courtside Financial. Today we're going to be talking about Clover Health and what I thought about their recent earnings report. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any videos. And also make sure you hit that like button because it really does go a long way in helping out the channel. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm not going to be doing too much editing on this video. But lastly, if you want to be a part of the conversation before it happens here on YouTube, Click the link in the description to join the free Courtside Financial Discord. When you open up your new brokerage account, you'll receive one free stock valued anywhere from $2.50 to $250. And when you make that initial deposit of $100 or more, you'll receive another free stock, and this free stock will be valued anywhere from $8 to $1,600. Lastly, cryptocurrency is now available on Webull, so you can trade cryptocurrency on the platform with zero commission. Now that the merger is complete and Clover is finally a public company, uh, we finally have some more in-detailed information on their financials and as far as what they did in the year of 2020. Uh, me personally, I said that I had not invested in Clover yet, but I was watching it. Uh, and being patient actually seems to have paid off here. The share price is a lot lower than when I last spoke on it. And on top of that, I was getting ready to buy the dip as well. But everyone knows that I'm very bullish on NEO. That's my core holding here. And so I definitely couldn't stay away from the dip that happened with NEO. I digress, but let's talk about their 2020 earnings. Net loss was $91.6 million in 2020 compared to $363.7 million in 2019, which is really good. That's a 74.8% decrease in net loss. Um, so for revenues and revenues for 2020, they did $672.9 million in revenue uh, compared to $462.3 million in 2019, which was a 45% uh, increase, which is also pretty good in my opinion. Operating expenses for 2020 were $191.7 million versus $186.4 million in 2019, which is a 2.84% increase. So not too much of an increase in operating expenses, uh, which is a good thing in my opinion, around 3% here. And I think that's good in my opinion because that's only a 3% increase in operating expenses, but yet they saw a 45% increase in revenues year over year and a 75% decrease uh, in net loss year over year with and as I mentioned with only a 3% increase in operating expenses So that really doesn't sound bad to me at all So with them doing that 673 million dollars in revenue in their um, spec uh, Investor presentation they actually gave guidance of 671 million dollars in revenue uh, And they narrowly outperformed that which is really good, you know uh, the bottom case is we expect companies to hit guidance. So in my opinion, if I'm looking at that as an investor, that definitely exceeds my expectations for the company. As far as their cash position, the company currently has $821 million in cash. That's more than net loss for the year. That's even more than net loss for the year in 2019. Um, so it looks like they do have a strong balance sheet as well. If you look at their liabilities, they have $387.9 million in liabilities. So like I said, to me, Clover has a strong balance sheet and good financial. As far as the guidance they gave, for 2021, they expect to do $820 million to $850 million in revenue. They currently have 58,000 Medicare Advantage members for uh, 2021. They expect to have 68,000 to 70,000 Medicare Advantage members. So now what seems to be concerning for some investors is that these uh, guidance targets are both lower than what they provided in their SPAC investor presentation. Uh, in their SPAC invest in pr investor presentation, they had 2021 revenue pegged at 880 million and 73,477 uh, Medicare Advantage members. I personally am not concerned with this at all. Uh, I see Clove as a long-term investment or Clover Health as a long-term investment. They have a cheaper product than their competitors and they are in a market that is going to grow exponentially. So I'm trying to imagine where Clover is going to be in 2030. Right now for the market that they serve, there's only 24.1 million people who are actually eligible for Medicare out of the 62 million people in the world. So that number is gonna grow. More people are going to need Medicare as people uh, start to get older and then on top of that, we're hearing a lot of political talk as far as decreasing the uh, age for Medicare from 65 to 60. So Clover is 41% cheaper than Medicare, and they're also 17% cheaper 
uh, than their nearest competitor on the private side of things. Overall, I'm actually really pleased with this earnings. I'm still watching Clover Health. Um, like everyone else out there, I have liquidity constraints. I can't invest in everything, but hopefully I am able to get into Clover at a good price. I'm um, thinking that that might happen uh, probably sometime next week. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope it was helpful for you guys. I want to know what you guys think about Clover Health. Make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Leave me a comment down below and I'll link the free discord in the description. As always, thank you guys for watching. I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you.